Hey everyone, welcome back to Every Version Ever. Today's episode is the episode that inspired this whole Peter and the Wolf miniseries. Last year, Sarah sent me the trailer for the subject of today's episode, a stop-motion Peter and the Wolf film, suggesting it as a potential podcast episode. We ended up recording it, but I had enough content to fill out last season, so it got postponed to this season. But in doing the episode, I got to wondering if there were any other versions of the story out there. Sarah and I had already reviewed Disney's version as part of our podcast on Make Mine Music, so I thought if I could find a few more, this could potentially be a series for every version ever. And I found a few more. So before we get into the really obscure stuff, including a black and white puppet show from the 50s and an animated TV special from Chuck Jones, let's first talk about the short that inspired the whole series, a 30-minute stop-motion film from Poland, Norway, and the UK, 2006's Peter and the Wolf. Okay, Peter and the Wolf. Now, what year did this one come out? 2006. And we were sort of having a memory within a memory because I discovered it, but then we weren't sure whether you had discovered it first, but you were re- If I did, it would have been years ago, and we only saw a trailer. So it was fresh, and it looked interesting to me, and you grabbed onto it as something that you wanted to review, so... Yeah, it looked really good and different and interesting and also something that i could use for multiple podcasts (laughs) it lived up to that and beyond i would say yeah it was really good it's lovely so the full title of this i'm going to probably butcher the pronunciation is sergey prokofiev's peter and the wolf i think it might be prokofiev probably Sergey is a cool name. And this was a Polish, British, Norwegian stop motion film, although there was a Mexican and a Swiss studio that worked on it a little bit too. But set in Russia. Yes, I think it was Russia because the writing looked Russian. And I think traditionally the story is in Russian anyway. If we're wrong, just tell us. It's yeah. okay. And this actually won the Oscar for the Best Animated Short at the 80th Academy Awards. Uh, Probably totally deserved it. Yeah. And there's no narrator, no spoken dialogue. The music was by the Philharmonia Orchestra in London. Mm. And when it was first released, it wasn't released like as a normal movie, like it just went to the theater. They toured it around and the Philharmonia Orchestra went with them and played live. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> That's an experience. Wow. Mm-hmm. That would be very cool. Who does that anymore? Like I could see I mean that these days it doesn't happen very much, I'm sure. I mean, that sounds so a hundred years ago or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's very yeah. cool. Good for them. And eventually they I don't know if they did it before they toured or not, but they recorded the soundtrack too so that it could eventually be released without having to have the band tour with them, the orchestra. Go back to the silent movie era. And I didn't re- I didn't write down everywhere that it premiered, but I wrote down the North American premiere, which was at the Mann Center for the Performing Arts in 2007. And then it was first broadcast in the U.S. on PBS's Great Performances in wow. 2008. I, and I could see how that would be up their alley. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I think everybody is vaguely familiar with Peter and the Wolf. You, Did you... You're more familiar with it than I am, because you grew up with the Disney one. And we yeah. we reviewed that, so you all can check that <laughs> out. But... I've checked in with you, like, what happened? What actually happened in the original story? Mm -hmm. The music is lovely, and with this story, they do take liberties, but they took some very interesting liberties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like it's one of those stories that, beyond the Disney version, I just, I know the story, but I don't know exactly how I know the story. It's probably partly the Disney version, but I know there was other things in my childhood like, it might, maybe we had an album. Which, I, it barely touched on my childhood at all. Mm-hmm. 
if any. I mean, besides my mother talking about it. I don't know. So that's nice that that was incorporated in your childhood. I mean, it's, it's a weird story. It's very, yeah, old country folk <laughs> story. Yes, yes. Complete with a big bad wolf. <laughs> like a lot of fairy tales. This one seems like it's set somewhere between the 1980s and today. Like, they probably yeah. just set it within the time period that they made it. Yeah, I'm not sure what time period it was supposed to be, but I know a kid had a skateboard, so it wasn't the 1700s or whenever the original no. story was written. No, uh, they're just, oh, it'll be interesting to unpack this because there are so many interesting little details. Like whoever, the people who made this were true artists, mm -hmm. are true artists. Hopefully none of them are dead. <laughs> <laughs> if reason enough, I would hope that they're still alive and kicking. The one thing that I really liked was that there was no dialogue, and when there was no music, you just had ambient noise, which I really liked. Mm. They I didn't, really liked they didn't like try that. to jazz it up in any way. No, yeah. No, really interesting blend of the old and the new. Mm hmm. It opens in a snowstorm. I immediately, you know, it's, it's easy to like it almost right away. Mm hmm. The mood of the storm the look of the storm mm -hmm. and the grandpa out there keeping vigil with his gun <laughs> like he's an old predator himself like <laughs> nothing is going to attack his fortress uh -huh. come come bad weather come whatever and one of the things that you think about is like it is like they're in their own little fortress Mm-hmm. because there's Basically just the one entrance to the woods next to their house, but he's built this wall keeping everything out, but also keeping his grandson in. And the, the, there's such a contrast because their inner world where they live, so much of it is sort of, I don't know, dark or shabby looking. And he looks out at the world and he sees the sun shining and it's like he wants to be free from this prison that they're in. But at the same time there's the contrast of, okay, the grandfather is raising his grandson. He's obviously already experienced loss, and mm -hmm. it, it, it's sort of, if you think about it, this is probably why he's being so extremely protective. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a good thing to think about because he is extremely protective, and, and you see how this boy is having a hard time in life, mm -hmm. being so sheltered. Yeah, it was kind of interesting, something that I thought of. In most versions, especially the Disney version, you have Peter as this happy little kid, and the music reflects that. Like, Peter's theme is really happy-go-lucky mm. and high and fun. It's like, this is a naive child, and the grandfather's like, boy, yeah. there's dangerous stuff out there, listen to me. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this one, it's like, the happy music kicks in once he's freed himself from yeah, the confines of his home. That's what I noticed because at the beginning there's no music like zero music until he gets out of the fence mm -hmm. and you just have him inside sullen glowering out the window and <laughs> it's like this is not the Peter that you think it is on the one hand I love this because you could watch this with anybody from a foreign country and actually get the story together. Mm -hmm. On the other hand um for instance, when his grandfather sends him into town to get potatoes, apparently, and the bullies come out of the shop and basically throw him in a dumpster, mm -hmm. I would think twice about showing that to some children. <laughs> like, Well, especially the one points like a gun straight at his face, too. Like, that was... Yeah, yeah that, it's disturbing, on the one hand, it sets you up for the story really well. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, like, if you know that somebody's, a sen you know, if they're seven years old <laughs> and you mm -hmm. and you think that they might be sensitive, uh, skip that part, maybe. <laughs> well, also, the duck gets eaten, so. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say you know that going in, but if you're not familiar with Peter and the Wolf, you don't know that the duck doesn't make it. And you definitely don't know about the dumpster, so here you go. <laughs> The the bullies, though, I wasn't expecting... Well, the bullies are the hunters, because they have the hunter's theme later on in the story. And they're just 
a couple of teenage bullies. Although the one at the beginning, the first time I watched this, I was like, is that his dad? Why is he letting him beat up this little kid? But then I realized later, oh, I guess he's just a, and, another kid. And weren't there, um, weren't there hunters in the original story? Or? Yes. Okay. That's who these kids are. They, they just right. took the place of the hunters. Yeah, probably teens or 20s, and they're, for some reason, incredible jerks. Yeah. I don't think they'd be in their 20s. They had, I don't think they were that much older than Peter was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And they think they're so tough. Yeah. I liked the girl in the story with the long <laughs> golden hair. She yeah, didn't she factor didn't, in much. Yeah, she was just an interesting background character. There was a whole group of kids that showed up in a couple of scenes. It was kind of fun to watch their reactions to different things. But she was like the only girl, wasn't she? There m might have been another one, but she stuck out partly because of her hair and partly because of her pink coat. It was very bright in contrast to all the darkness around, and I think they did that on purpose to make her stand out specifically. Yeah, they're probably going to end up together. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's fan fiction. <laughs> Uh, I also, I kind of liked it that they made Peter's coat dirty. Mm. And you have these ganky old cars, yeah. this ganky yeah. city, like the city's not doing great. He's not doing great. Things mm -hmm. just aren't great. Mm -hmm. And um, he gets done with the, with the bullies and he's back with his loving duck because in this version it's a duck instead of a goose apparently i'm not sure i can't remember what if it's always a duck or if there's a goose i think the the ones that i've seen it's a duck okay at least in this one he's a runner duck yes because i looked that up it's specifically a runner duck and they have a slightly different shape they're like Mm -hmm. skinnier oh, oh, taller uh, yeah, i'm familiar with the runner ducks <laughs> i am to to me they're almost like the siamese cats of the duck world i don't know they, i could see that they they've got their own thing going on they're yeah. independent they're fast they're yeah yeah and this one's very cute this one is cute no and it's very affectionate and it dies <laughs> <laughs> yes very sad because I thought maybe it would be like the Disney story and there would be redemption of the duck, but I think that that was nipped in the bud pretty quickly. Nope. <laughs> oh, and there's this scene. Okay, we got to talk about the grandpa in bed. <laughs> you pan. Okay, so Peter, he's sad. He wants out. He needs to go play. And so he's going to go steal his grandfather's keys because he has him basically bolted into the yard. <laughs> In a loving way. <laughs> and, but the cat is snuggling with the grandpa, and it's so cute. <laughs> I love that cat, even though it's, like, slightly ugly and angry all the time when it's awake. It's so cute in a ferocious, angry it's, kind of it's way. It's lovely. Yeah, the cat is its own thing. But I want to talk about the bedroom, because there's so many little details that if you were to watch it five times, maybe you would still pick up on stuff. The mm -hmm. the the bedside table that has the cloth on it, there's a little ashtray with cigarettes. There are bottles up on a shelf that I don't even know what those orange things on the shelf were. Like there's a plant that looks a little bit sad up in the window. <laughs> you have the cat hunting a fly. Like there are so many little like whoever made this is familiar with cats. They mm -hmm. know they're no they know oh, yeah. how to do all the cat things from the chattering mm -hmm. to the yeah and then you explained to me that apparently the magpie had a broken wing yeah and i don't think it does in any other version but when he it... goes when he goes to town the man in like the 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 <laughs> bear the bear keeper the this is a re also the thing the man has the the bear and the tutu or whatever i think he like runs a circus or something yes. i don't know but he gives the boy a balloon, and the it's, balloon... It's the most random scene if you don't know what's going on, because there's this hulking giant of a man wearing a purple and a big furry cape, and he's just staring down at him, and he hands him a balloon. So Which seriously. is awesome. <laughs> Which is awesome. But yeah, he takes this balloon, and he eventually ties... Well, the bird ties it himself somehow because the bird wants to fly again. So he's trying to use this helium balloon to get off the ground. Yes. And so they go off on their magnificent adventure. 
this uh-huh. is where the music kicks in once mm-hmm. he once he breaks free of the fence mm-hmm. which i loved that little touch and then the cat is hunting a fly and sees them outside and, <laughs> and joins them and i love this scene because you're zeroed in on the magpie's bum and the cat <laughs> is hunting the magpie and it is so it's so cute like the cat is flexing her little claws <laughs> and she's chattering and she's wiggling and she's getting lined up and everything and she misses the bird ends up breaking through the ice and gets herself out quite easily and with great dignity shakes herself off it's goes, like you saw nothing <laughs> shake shake each paw individually <laughs> And goes to hunt the birds more, and then the boo- bird, and then the bird poos on her face, <laughs> and she looks slightly. She uh, looks miffed. <laughs> I mean, maybe slightly surprised and horrified. <laughs> I mean, the cat always looks miffed in a way. So the cat is great. Yes. And there's just something so I don't know. There's something uncomfortable about stop motion, but kind of in an interesting way. I don't know, like Fantastic Mr. Fantastic Mr. Fox. There's an atmosphere that's just weird, mm-hmm. and this one has its own atmosphere that's weird, and it reminds me a little bit of the Czech Alice in Wonderland, mm. where, like, it's kind of unsettling but fun at the same time. Yeah. And I don't. Yeah. Well, with the with the other Alice, that makes sense why it would be unsettling, but with this one, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 very different. I think it had a lot to do with the faces. Like they didn't try to make people cute. Like they they made them interesting. For the most part, there was at least one part where his facial expression seemed like more should be going on like it was more of a straight stare. But then you switch over to another scene and just all of the really delicate eye movements because Mm -hmm. his grandfather catches him gives him a little smack on the bum not hard (laughs) and gets him inside like he's not harsh with him it's just like okay boy you need to come back in and be safe but then you can hear the noise of the forest like somebody's coming and it's the wolf Mm -hmm. and And he has all of these really delicate eye movements as he's listening to this happening Mm -hmm. and it was It was great. I also liked that it changed to the wolf's theme before you saw the wolf. Like, and it's probably not something that you notice if you're not familiar with the music. But you're telling us. But yeah, when once he's inside and he's listening at the fence, the music changes and it's the wolf's theme. And if you know each animal's theme or each character's theme, because the hunters and the grandpa and Peter all have themes too, Mm -hmm. then you know what's coming. And he looks out, and the wolf is I just knew because of the the forest noises that they put Mm. with it. It's like the birds are are sounding off an alarm Mm. as he's coming. So yeah, very nice little details there. And here's the thing. If you watch the trailer for Peter and the Wolf, the, the wolf looks so majestic and kind of unsettling and then when you watch the stop motion he's so cute (laughs) you know we have uh my family has two dogs and one of them is a tricolor male with fluffy cheeks and then this dog comes along and it's all dark with fluffy cheeks and it's just i just wanted to pet it it's just (laughs) so cute and crystal blue eyes and Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I liked yellow they, teeth. <laughs> I liked how they didn't make it hideous. Like in the Disney version, the wolf is ugly and angry, like most cartoons of that day portrayed this is, wolves. This is closer to life. Yeah, it looked more like it's a real not, wolf. It's not perfect in its appearance, but it's well, not. None of them are. <laughs> but it's not ugly. No, it's very cute. Like I say, yellow teeth. Mm-hmm. But. A cozy, squishy little face. <laughs> I also liked how it moved. Like, it's standing on the top of the hill, and then it sort of quickly slinks down the hill when it's starting to hunt the characters. And it's trying to hunt the cat, and the cat, of course, is all roly-poly and cute and gets <laughs> out of the way. And the cat still wants to hunt the magpie. Um, and Peter's trying to get the duck back, but that doesn't work out. And then Peter decides that he's going to have revenge Mm -hmm. on the wolf. And so 
collects rope and netting and heads out there and so that whole dance begins which we don't have to go into the minutia of that because you guys need to like watch it <laughs> but eventually I thought the magpie was going to be toast but anyway it did kind of seem like that because he's like telling the magpie you, you, I, like you're getting this from his movements like go scratch up his face or something and the magpie ends up going down there partly by accident and somehow evades death <laughs> which is it's lovely that not everybody dies <laughs> so he does eventually catch the wolf and those nasty hunters are coming along and it's like they get freaked out by the presence of the wolf or something i i think that's partly it the one tries to shoot at the wolf but then the other one falls on him and makes the shot go off and the cat falls out of the tree and i wondered if maybe they thought they accidentally shot the cat i don't and know and then they ran off Either way, they're jerks. Yeah. So the grandfather finally figures out what's up. And he comes out, he's all shaking and holding the gun, and he's standing between Peter and the wolf. It was very cute. I like that they gave him a fluffy white beard. (laughs) And uh, I didn't see this next part coming because I thought maybe he was just daydreaming this. But he takes the gun from his grandfather, and they put it in like a caged wagon, Mm -hmm. kind of like the... Kind of like a circus, I guess. When I first thought, I thought he took the gun from him because he was like, no, I will do it. No, that's what I figured too. <laughs> like, I will have my revenge. Yes, but And no. I love the twist that comes because they take the wolf into town and it's not fair, really, because you're thinking, okay, this wild animal is in a cage and they're going to just try and make money off of it like circus. Mm-hmm. And it looks like the grandfather is haggling for that yeah, he's he first he goes to the guy who probably has a circus the big balloon man mm-hmm. and it's obvious that he doesn't want this wolf so then he goes to the furrier and the furrier is like okay. handing him some money and the grandfather counts it and hands it back he doesn't want apparently he gave him a paltry sum mm. and they're haggling while all the kids are gathering around this cage i also like that when the grandfather was walking along the cat was yes doing the whole i'm following you i might trip you i love you (laughs) walk that's so cute but anyway so you can see into the cage you can see the wolf's not happy but it's not being vicious i don't think and but then the mean hunters come along Mm -hmm. and and they're acting all tough even though they ran away terrified and one of them's pointing the gun in there and I thought he was going to release the wolf onto the hunters. I thought so, too. <laughs> but he ended a rope, and he caught the hunters in a net. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, if you don't want to know what happens, just stop listening. <laughs> he, This is where it gets cool. It's so unrealistic, but whatever. This, this isn't about realism. He releases the wolf, and he and the wolf walk side by side like respectful mm-hmm. comrades or friends. And then it's like he sends him off into mm-hmm. the moonlit night. And yeah. like he has he has conquered his enemies. He has made friends with the wild. And it's just so cool. <laughs> I loved that. And the grandfather yeah. wasn't expecting it either. No, he's like freaking out. Par- partly because it's like, my grandson's going to get eaten. And partly because it's like, there goes my money. <laughs> but it's like, he's free now. Because if he's overcome what his fa- what his grandfather was trying to protect him from, he's, mm, he's basically yeah. become a man now and he's free. He's free from all of his oppressors and enemies and, mm-hmm. con- you know, constrictions or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, it was lovely. Yeah. And, yes, he's there with his tussled brown hair and his piercing blue eyes and he has overcome (laughs) all and then he can grow up and marry the blonde chick with the flowing (laughs) hair (laughs) and hopefully get a better car than (laughs) what yeah they all drove old beaters like you never saw any new cars in this but i liked that touch It, it, it added atmosphere yeah there's so much atmosphere in this yeah and really the most beautiful peaceful place is in nature Mm -hmm. out on the lake aside from the cat sleeping with the grandfather one of my favorite random scenes we i guess we didn't even mention was when he gets the bird up into the tree and the bird just jumps and he's like slowly floating out of the tree 
because he had a broken wing and he can't fly. So he's just and the look of bliss on the bird's face as yeah. he's slowly floating. I just that was a, that. that was another thing in the town. The bird has healed and yeah. is flying around too. So it's like aside from the duck, things are mm-hmm. things are well. Yeah. But no, it like I say, so much atmosphere, so many lovely details, mm-hmm. interesting twists to the story, modernizing it but not taking away the charming music yes, and yeah. and everything. So I appreciate when they can modernize something but not make it feel too modern. Like it still has a timeless quality to it. Sure. And that's a hard thing to do sometimes. No, they did such a great job. And while it doesn't seem like something that you would watch with adults, I feel like it would be a great thing to watch with adults just as long as they're open-minded to it. Mm-hmm. Maybe more so than for a lot of children. Yeah, I am I could see a certain type of child liking this. I would have liked this. Sure. and And that's one of those things of, is it the adult effect? Like... Like we talked about, when I watched Pinocchio as a child, it didn't bother me. As an adult, yeah, it yeah. bothers me. So, how m- I can't speak to how much of it would have affected me or not affected me. Mm-hmm. You know? So, either way, it's lovely. And if you think the children can handle it, show it to them. And if not, have a party with your adult friends and mm-hmm. and theme it around, you know... Russia or Scandinavia or something and have fun snacks and Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah that'd be fun yeah this is a great little short it's not even a full movie it's only 30 minutes so yes but if you pause stuff the way we do at our house it'll take (laughs) you probably an hour to get through it it it, it might yeah I I don't think most people probably pause as much as we end up pausing (laughs) we can't be alone we just can't (laughs) well probably not no Gotta go and get snacks and stuff and pet the cat. But anyway, five stars, A+, plus, definitely recommend. And that doesn't happen with everything that we watch, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely recommend this one. Especially for animation fans. I think there's so much interesting technique to this, too, that you'll totally get something out of it. Even the way they did his little teeth. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, definitely watch. Okay. All right. I think that's going to be all for now. We'll see you next time whenever that is. All right. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Every Version Ever. If you like what you've heard, make sure to subscribe on your preferred podcast platform or to the Every Version Ever YouTube channel. Make sure to follow my co-host as well. Any relevant links will be in the description for easy access. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode. So thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.